Brevard County is home to many environmental treasures. One of the least known, but most wildlife diverse of these treasures is Rich Grissom Memorial Wetlands at Vieira. The roots of the Rich Grissom Memorial Wetlands reach back to 1991, when Brevard County's South Central Water Reclamation Facility was built to provide wastewater treatment services for the Suntree, Vieira, and North Wickham Road areas. Let's learn more about these wetlands, why they were built, where they're located, and how they've become one of Brevard's premier spots for appreciating native wildlife. The facility was constructed to treat 3 million gallons per day of wastewater. This reclaimed water was sent to a 2,000 acre sod farm. However, by 1995, it became apparent that the sod farm couldn't accept all of the reuse water. So the excess water was sent to three golf courses and several subdivisions. This solution was good for the dry season, however, not for the wet season. So as a solution, the county sought uh, to get a permit to discharge during the wet weather into the St. John's River via the Four Mile Canal. In order to prevent pollution in the river, the treatment technology was upgraded to Biological Nutrient Removal Advanced Waste Treatment. This technology uses naturally occurring bacteria to treat the sewage in a manner similar to composting. Manipulation of dissolved oxygen levels in the wastewater allows the bacteria to remove pollutants in the treatment plant. At the end of the biological treatment process, the reclaimed water is filtered and chlorinated to make it suitable for lawn irrigation. Although most of the reclaimed water is used for irrigational purposes within a 24-hour period, the excess reclaimed water is stored here in the wetlands where it's polished, that is, excess phosphorus is removed from it. This phosphorus removal allows for wet weather discharge of any excess flow into the St. John's River via the Four Mile Canal. However, since operations began in 2000, there have been few discharges to the river. In recent years, the wetlands have been used as a seasonal storage basin, with large quantities of reclaimed water recovered each spring for irrigational uses. The Rich Grissom Memorial Wetlands were constructed in 1998 on approximately 200 acres of pasture. Designed to not only treat water, the wetlands also offer an aesthetic and environmental amenity. The site is easily accessible by car, with roadways winding between the wetland cells and a central lake. To maximize recruitment from the natural wetlands and pasture, construction and disturbance was limited to the lakes and the berm areas. The berms are constructed of a clay core and naturally occurring soils. This serves two purposes, one as a natural recreational facility and the other to impound the treated water. The marshes and lakes were designed to mimic natural central Florida wetlands. Over 200,000 plants composed of 19 wetland species were installed, along with 2,600 plants composed of 14 upland species. The Rich Grissom Memorial Wetlands contained two deep marshes, one deep water lake and two shallow marshes about 30 acres each, and four islands. The marsh cells and islands host a rich diversity of indigenous vegetation. Cells one and two, occupying the south and east sides of the system, mimic deep marshes. Giant bulrush and soft stem bulrush grow above the water level, while fragrant water lily and southern naiad are the predominant submerged plants. Cells three and four, located in the northwest portion of the system, provide flag marsh habitat primarily composed of pickerel weed, duck potato, arrowhead, and soft stem bulrush. Pines and sable palms were left as roosts for a variety of birds drawn to the area. Each cell encircles an island of at least one acre, with each island designed to resemble a different natural community. The cell one island is a cypress hammock. The cell two island is a pine and hardwood forest. The cell three island has a bare shell substrate for shorebird nesting. And the cell four island is a hardwood hammock. The site's central lake reaches a maximum depth of 29 feet but a littoral shelf along its western shore is less than three feet deep. This shelf encompasses a wetland mitigation area required by the Department of Environmental Protection. The Natural Resources Management Office monitors the health of the mitigation area, conducting semi-annual scientific surveys of the vegetation. Data is collected to provide the percent coverage of total vegetation, wetland species, non-wetland species, and nuisance species. 
This information provides the basis for objective and scientific assessment of ecological function and change. Elevated nutrients from the effluent affect the local food web. From microorganisms, snails, and other aquatic invertebrates, up through the animals that feed upon them, like fish, frogs, and birds. Because of the rich food supply, an abundance of birds and other high-level members of the food chain inhabit the area. Migratory birds from around the country, especially ducks, can be found here during the winter. Thousands of blue-winged teal, green-winged teal, and cinnamon teal can be seen, as well as northern shovelers, lesser scops, canvasbacks, redheads, and ring-neck ducks. Black-crowned night herons, great blue herons, sandhill cranes, and black-necked stilts are among the waterfowl and shorebirds that nest in the wetlands. Limpkins wade near the shorelines in search of apple snails. Forsters turn suitors bring minnows to their would-be girlfriends waiting on the berm roads in a unique mating ritual. Male boat-tailed grackles perform as well, trying to impress potential mates with their strutting and wing fluttering. Crested caracara, a threatened species and Mexico's national bird, often forage on the banks of the wetlands and nest on adjacent land. Bald eagles have also nested within sight of the wetlands and can be seen almost daily as they soar overhead or survey the area from sentinel trees and snags. The Rich Grissom Memorial Wetlands are a popular site among photographers and birding enthusiasts. In November 2006, birders from as far away as Texas were drawn to the wetlands by the appearance of two masked ducks, infrequent accidental visitors from the tropics. In November 2002, the wetlands drew international attention with the first mangrove swallow sighting verified in the United States. Thousands of birders converged on the area following the observation by a group participating in the annual Space Coast Birding and Wildlife Festival. The Vieira wetlands are an increasingly popular Space Coast landmark for ecotourists. In addition to the rich diversity of birds, visitors can also expect to see alligators and aquatic turtles along the shorelines. Otters are common, and white-tailed deer and bobcats are seen occasionally. Because wildlife is exactly that, visitors are reminded of the safety guidelines. Observation decks and overlooks provide easy and convenient vantage points. In April 2007, a ribbon-cutting ceremony officially opened the Vieira Wetlands Visitor Center gazebo. The gazebo is surrounded by a butterfly garden and overlooks a wildflower area. The entire perimeter of the wetlands central lake has been seeded with Florida wildflower species, funded through a grant provided by the Florida Wildflower Foundation through license plate sales. Rockledge Gardens contributed the materials for the butterfly garden. Volunteers helped to maintain the wildflowers and visitor center. To maintain the lakeside wildflower project, prescribed burns are used to reduce the accumulation of vegetative overgrowth, to promote reseeding, and to encourage the recruitment of additional native wildflower species. The goal of the management plan is to recreate a natural fire cycle. Native Florida species, both plants and animals, evolved the ability to cope with periodic wildfires. In fact, many are fire dependent, requiring fire to reproduce and flourish. All natural Florida communities, from scrubs to wetlands, recover from the effects of fire with surprising speed. Watershed Action volunteers planted many of the trees on the cell islands, installed bat and marten houses, and contributed to other features throughout the wetlands. Of course, the Rich Grissom Memorial Wetlands are but one of myriad sites where volunteers are needed. You can learn more about these and other volunteer programs and how you can help make a difference by calling Brevard County's Volunteer Coordinator at 633-2031. The wetlands provide visitors with an up-close opportunity to view abundant wildlife and native vegetation in a stunning setting that many enjoy without leaving the comfort of their cars. The site is open to the public from dawn to dusk year-round, so whenever you have the urge to view a natural spectacle, come out and visit. The Rich Grissom Memorial Wetlands were named in memory of a longtime Brevard County employee and animal lover who worked at the adjacent treatment facility. The wetlands are located close to I-95 in Southwest Vieira, directly west of the treatment plant at 10001 Wickham Road. For more information, visit the website 
or call the Vieira Wetlands Information Line at 637-5521.